Our fifth presentation in this session is from Julia Hidi, who will talk about managing the data flow of a Mongoose survey with open access tools. Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Julia Healy, um, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how um, we within the Mongoose survey are using some open access tools to manage our data flow. Um, I want to talk to you from the perspective of the Mongoose survey team, but um, much of what I'll show you today uh, is also in use uh, by the Meerkat Fornax team. Um, and in fact, they laid the groundwork uh, writing many of the scripts that form the foundation of what I'll show you. Um, so this uh, talk is presented um, on behalf of some members of the, the Fornax team, um, Filippo and Paolo and Daniel, um, as well as, as the Mongoose team, uh, Owen, Filippo and myself. So first things first, for those um, of you that don't know, um, the Mongoose and Meerkat surveys are two of the large uh, survey projects with Meerkat. Um, both of these are, are H1 surveys. Um, Fornax is a uh, is comprised of a number of different pointings um, covering roughly 12 square degrees across the Fornax uh, galaxy cluster, uh, while Mongoose is a deep survey of 30 individual nearby galaxies. Um, but both surveys um, have a large number of observation tracks that have to be individually calibrated and imaged. Um, to date, Mongo uh, Fornax has about 48 observations. Uh, Mongoose has about 116. And both teams have uh, multiple people working on the calibration and imaging. So we needed a way to be able to, to keep track of um, which observation tracks have been observed, uh, what has been processed, uh, who's doing what processing. Um, and we also need to, needed a, rec a way to keep a record of, of what was done to the data so that we could um, keep track of uh, any problems that may arise um, in, in the, the process of the data reduction. Um, so this is just a, a quick overview of, of what we need to get tra keep track of. Um, so the Meerkat observations are done uh, in a queue-based system. Um, so we have to submit uh, the teams have to submit an OBT to Sereo, uh, which contains all of the observing information. Uh, once the, obser the observation or track has been observed, um, we can move the data from the Sereo archive to the computer cluster where we're doing uh, the calibration and imaging. Um, once the data has been uh, calibrated, um, we can then uh, inspect the final data products, so the H1 data cubes. Um, for the quality. Um, if there are issues um, arising uh, in, in those cubes, then we just have to go back and do redo parts or all of the calibration. Um, but if it's good, then then we can combine um, that track with with other tracks for those for that target to create the, the survey data product. So we really only have um, control over this process um, once the data has been observed and is on the archive. Um, but it is important for us to be able to keep an eye on what tracks are waiting to be observed so that we can keep an, an idea of, of when our data is going to flow. Um, so how do we keep track of this in a way that's accessible to, to all our team members that are involved in the data reduction? Um, well, our solution has been to use uh, GitHub. Um, and we chose it because it's uh, largely because it's free, but it's also very visual. Um, and has some very useful built-in project management tools. So we can create um, issues uh, for each track, um, and this enables us to keep a record of what's been done to that particular observation. Uh, GitHub's uh, labeling system also means that we can, um, it makes it very easy to search through the issue lists for different um, uh, issues that might appear. Um, GitHub's code repository also means that we can keep track of all our, our configuration scripts and tables um, containing the observation information. Um, and we can also keep uh, track on what uh, changes are being made to these files. Um, but also, more importantly, um, another really useful thing about GitHub is that uh, the command line tools mean that we can build in an automated connection between the data reduction pipeline and the information being added to each issue. Um, and we do this uh, using an SSH connection to GitHub 
um, using the command line interface. And, and the URL to the uh, command line interface documentation is, is on the slide. So how uh, do we manage our observations in Mongoose? Well, this is an overview um, of our project board. Um, this is just a screenshot. And, and this is how we keep track of um, all our observations. The tracks are added to the board um, when the OPTs are submitted. Um, and then at each different step in the workflow that I showed earlier, um, new labels are added to the, the track issue. Um, and this moves each track um, along the different columns um, of this project board. Once um, the tracks are, are processing on our cluster, um, they're assigned to, to a particular team member who's then responsible for the quality assessment. Um, once they've uh, deemed the data ready, um, it gets moved to the, the final column um, and, and it's then um, moved off onto another board. Um, we also have, um, we keep a record of, of which galaxies we need to go back and, and relook at. So at the heart of um, our tracking are these, these GitHub issues. So these are created for um, each observation track. Um, so this means um, for Mongoose, for our 30 galaxies, each galaxy will have 10 issues. Um, we've developed a series of, of Python scripts which wrap around um, the GitHub command line interface um, so that we can add uh, new issues when the OPT is submitted um, fairly easily and automatically. Um, and then once the observations are done, um, a similar set of scripts will add the observation ID um, to the to the existing issue um, and, and update the labels so that the, the card moves along the project board. Um, the automation of the cards is um, done using uh, GitHub Actions. Um, and if you want to know more, you can take, check out um, the URL there. Um, and this, this screenshot just shows you an idea of what um, one of the initial beginning parts of the issues for, for a particular track looks like. Um, so this particular galaxy had been observed, we'd um, added the labels and, and that had moved it um, along our project board. Um, so how do we keep uh, a record of the data reduction process? Um, well, uh, data reduction and calibration is done using the Caracal pipeline. Um, to, we do all the imaging with that. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of how Caracal works, um, as that's another entire talk. Um, but I will encourage you to look at uh, to go and have a look at Twitter, where it's uh, post on Caracal, um, and I think it can be found in, in Poster Room Five. So Caracal um, has some really useful um, features that help us keep clear records of our data reduction. Um, the detailed log files. Uh, contain all the observation Im information, such as how many uh, dishes were in use, the various flagging statistics. Um, the pipeline also produces um, a number of diagnostic plots uh, that we use to assess the quality of the calibration process. Um, and all this information is, is collated into um, a, a, a series of calibration reports um, using some, some custom Python scripts. So uh, these um, uh, calibration reports um, are written in, um, in GitHub Markdown. Um, they're separated into, into five different sections, um, which are automatically uploaded um, as separate comments to the issue for that particular track. Um, for those that are interested, the, the five um, sections are, are the observation info, which is uh, shown on the screenshot on the right. Um, the information on the cross calibration, uh, flagging uh, of the target, the continuum images after self calibration, and then finally the H1 line report. Um, so these reports are, are uploaded directly to GitHub um, once the pipeline is finished running. Um, which also updates the labels on, on this particular track. Um, and at this point, um, we've chosen to require, uh, chosen to use um, manual interve intervention to upload the images associated with each report. 
This can be done automatically, um, but because we need to manually look at the, the H1 uh, cubes and, and, and manually check the data, this is a good point to, um, to force someone to, to take a look at, at the report. Um, so along with, with uploading the images, whoever's been assigned this, this report um, or this track um, is, is in charge of checking the calibration. Um, if there are any issues um, that they note with the data, um, it can be uh, documented in, in the top comment um, of the issue so that we can clearly see um, what those issues might be. Um, if all is good uh, with the data, then it just gets a, a, a calibration good label. Um, if the H1 is good, then it gets a, an H1 good label. Um, if it needs more attention, then, then we have a series of labels um, for that. Um, so that's sort of how um, we keep uh, track of what's going on. So coming back to the, this overview um, of our, our project, once they, um, the tracks have been marked as, as good calibration, um, they end up um, somewhere in, in the last two columns. If there's a bit more attention needed for the H1, um, they're in the second last column. If, if all is good, then they go into the, into the final column. Um, once they've been marked as H1 good, um, we use a, a, another project board to keep track of um, an overview of, of the galaxies as a whole, um, as these will then be combined to form our deep H1 data products. Um, so having so I'm going to sort of leave you with, with some final thoughts um, on, on how we stayed organized with, with GitHub. Um, and I will say that this, this whole environment has enabled us to stay organized and has allowed our team to maintain um, a central database of scripts um, and data with other useful information. Um, so the three main GitHub project management tools that we use are the, the code repository, um, which stores all our um, files needed to run the pipeline, as well as um, any other scripts used to create uh, the science data products um, that are later released to the larger survey team. Um, also, all the scripts that are used to do all the automation are stored uh, in this repository. Um, the second part is, is the project boards. Um, and these, uh, along with the issues, allow us to keep an overview of which tracks have been observed or still need to be observed where they are in the calibration and imaging process. Um, but they also, more importantly, in terms of re reproducibility, um, enable us to keep detailed records of what's being done to the data during each calibration step. Um, and the way that we've managed to automate um, many of the interactions with these issues as the tracks move through the different workflow stages has meant that we actually stay current um, on the, the administration. Um, and the automation has also enabled us to make batch updates to the issues. Um, and this is important uh, as we have so many uh, tracks that will need to be, uh, and issues that need to be created and updated. Uh, we've also made extensive use to um, use the wiki pages um, quite extensively. And here we have, uh, we keep all the information about the pipeline strategies um, that we've used, as well as the information about the different software installed on our cluster um, as, and some other how to's associated with the project. Um, so I hope um, some of what I've shared might be useful for those looking for a way to keep uh, track of their projects. Um, not well, thank you for listening and happy to take any questions. Thank you for that very interesting presentation. We do have two questions on Discord. And the first one is from Venustiano, who asked whether you, uh, how you would recommend the use of a tool for non-experts. Um, well, I mean, I must admit, when we started um, using GitHub, I was not an expert. It's very easy to use, um, and there's a lot of documentation. Um, so it's it's quite simple to start using actually. 
um, for anyone who, who's not an expert. Thank you. And Angus would like to know whether you have any thoughts on how GitHub's boards compare to Trello's uh, boards for tracking things for workflow. Ah, um, I haven't done any comparisons. Um, we did, when we started down this route, we, we did look at a bunch of different options. Um, but my research sort of showed that they were all fairly similar um, at a, you know, to first order. Um, but we ended up going with the, the GitHub project boards because it also enabled us to keep everything centralized. And I, I think the biggest um, pro with using GitHub was our ability to automate it. Um, and that has been um, probably one of the biggest wins of doing this is being able to, to automate a lot of the, the updates to our, our issue tracks. Thank you. And very quickly, because we are running out of time, a final question. How about character? Is that easy to use for non-experts? Ah, uh, uh, that's probably a, a question better asked to the to the Caracol developers. Um, I've been using it for a while. It's pretty straightforward, and their documentation um, is pretty comprehensive. Um, but I, I also work alongside many of the Caracol developers, so I always have an inside track there. Thank you very much. Let's thank the speaker again.